The release of Caverns of Ixalan brings with it four new Commander Precon decks, each focusing on a specific creature type. We have a Dinosaur deck, a Vampire deck, a Merfolk deck, and a Pirate deck. In this video, I'll be breaking down one of the four deck lists for you, giving you an in-depth look at some of the new legendary creatures, the new cards, the better reprints, and then a budget-friendly guide on upgrading each of these decks. Without further ado, let's begin. In this video, we will be discussing the Velociramp Tor deck, love the name, a red, white, and green deck that focuses on dinosaurs and ramp. See, dinosaur cards are expensive to cast, and so to mitigate that, this deck will have a greater focus on getting lands onto the battlefield. So without further ado, let's meet our cover commander, Petlaza Sunfavored, a 4-4 dinosaur for 2, a green, a red, and a white. It has one ability. Whenever it or another dinosaur enters the battlefield under your control, you may discover X. Where X is that creature's toughness, this ability can only be utilized once per turn. Discover is one of the mechanics from the Lost Caverns of Ixalan and is somewhat reminiscent of Cascade. When you discover, you exile cards from the top of your library until you exile a non-land card with a mana value less or equal to the discover value. You can choose to cast that card without paying its mana cost or put it to your hand, and then the remainder of cards exiled get put to the bottom of your library in a random order. This offers us a lot of value as we can get an additional spell with every dinosaur we have enter the battlefield, or we can get a card to our hand. It's good to keep in mind that the spell you discover does not have to be cast, and so if you discover a piece of interaction that you want to hold on to for later, that can work to your benefit. If you're in need of a board wipe or an answer to an opponent's threat, you can use this to dig for that answer. We also have a few alternate commanders that we can use. Waita, Trainer Prodigy, is 3 mana for a 1-5 human warrior with haste. You can pay 2 and a green to tap Waya to have target creature you control fight another target creature. This ability costs 2 less if it targets 2 creatures that you control. Lastly, if a creature you control is being dealt damage causes a triggered ability of a permanent you control to trigger, that ability triggers an additional time. This is a really interesting design as it will encourage infighting amongst your creatures. See, an old mechanic from Dinosaurs was Enraged, which would trigger whenever that creature would take damage, and oftentimes you would get a substantial amount of value from that trigger. By getting an additional trigger off of this commander, you can result in even more value, and then it would incentivize us fighting amongst our own creatures. This can be used as a means of removal, as many dinosaurs being inherently large creatures means that their fighting opponent's creatures would likely clear off some of those creatures. I feel like this would do better as a commander of their own deck since our main strategy here is going to be churning out more dinosaurs. I don't really like the idea of our dinosaurs getting hurt from their friends. They had a bad enough time with the rock movement that they got later on. Lastly, one of the reprint commanders is none other than Zakama Primal Calamity. This is honestly one of my favorite dinosaurs just because it's so excessive. This 9 mana 9-9 nine nine has Vigilance, Reach, and Trample. It also has 3 activated abilities, each costing 2 generic and then 1 of each of Zakama's colors. The red ability will deal 3 damage to a target creature. The green ability destroys target artifacts or enchantments, and then the white ability gains us 3 life. The abilities are pretty versatile, maybe a little underwhelming, but they let us clear the battlefield of potential blockers and threats. I would largely recommend Zakama remains in the 99 only because the mana cost means this will likely only ever hit the battlefield once. So now that we've met our commander options, let's take a look at some of the best new cards from this deck. Bronze Beak Foragers is 4 mana for a 3-4 that, when it enters the battlefield for each opponent, you exile up to one target non-land permanent that player controls until the Foragers leaves the battlefield. You can also pay X and 1 white to put target card with mana value X exiled with the foragers into their owner's graveyard, and then you gain X life. This is a very good on-theme removal card. We have basically Grasp of Fate on a creature, and even better, you can pay the mana value of that card plus 1 white mana to move one of those cards into the graveyard and gain you a chunk of life. Because that card is getting put into the graveyard, it will not return from exile into the battlefield when the foragers leave play. Curious Altasaur is a 4 mana for a 2-5 with Vigilance and Reach. Whenever a dinosaur you control deals combat damage to a player, you draw a card. This will trigger multiple times if you deal combat damage with multiple dinosaurs. This is another great value engine, giving us additional card draw should we manage to go on the aggro. Dinosaur Egg is a flavor win, as a 0-3 for 2 mana. 
It has Evolve, so whenever a creature with greater power or toughness enters the battlefield, you can put a plus one plus one counter onto the egg. When the dinosaur egg dies, you discover X, where X is its toughness. Right off the bat, you will discover at least three with no additional benefit. When you evolve the egg, you actually get to choose whether you're looking at the power or toughness. If either of those values on the new creature is greater than those of the egg, you get the plus one plus one counter. This is probably one of my favorite new cards from this deck. Earthshaker Dreadmaw is a 6-6 six, six for 6 mana with Trample. When it enters the battlefield, you draw a card for each other dinosaur you control. Colossal Dreadmaw has had quite the glow up and now functions as a powerful draw spell. This deck definitely gave a ton of love to dinosaur fans, giving the deck multiple options to now function much smoother. Scion of Calamity is a 5 mana 5-5 five five with Myriad, which triggers when it attacks. For each opponent, you create a tapped and attacking token that's a copy of the Scion attacking that opponent. When it deals combat damage to a player, you destroy target artifact or enchantment that player controls. This is a 3 for 1 on the naturalize ability, and it can help us clear out 3 problem cards. Do keep in mind that UFF Plant Lads in play, you can actually trigger their ability with one of these dinosaurs hitting the battlefield, giving you another Discover 5 trigger. Sunfrill Imitator is a 3-3 for 3 mana, and whenever it attacks, you can have it become a copy of another target dinosaur you control, except it retains the name and copy ability. This can be a ton of fun giving you another giant dinosaur to swing in with. Two Zakamas, yes please. And this is actually possible too, as the Sunfrill will retain its name as the Sunfrill Imitator, and so the Legend rule will not come into play. Unfortunately, this won't trigger the entering the battlefield abilities, since the Sunfrill is not technically entering the battlefield as this ability will resolve. Temple Altisaur is a 3-4 for 5 mana. If a source would deal damage to another dinosaur you control, prevent all but one of that damage. This is the perfect include if you choose to build a deck around the fighting mechanic. Usually, a creature with rage is limited only by the amount of damage it can withstand before it dies. Even a large creature, like the Atex Alpasaur, can be taken out if it fights too large of creatures, as it can only take a collective 10 damage. With this in play, however, you could, in theory, use this up to 10 times. In the next section, let's take a look at the best reprints from this deck. These are some of the cards that you'll likely want to keep in the 99 as you upgrade your build. Apex Altasaur, as we've mentioned before, enters the battlefield and fights up to one target creature that we don't control. It also has an Enrage where it will fight up to one target creature we don't control whenever it is dealt damage, aka during fighting. So the way this works is when it enters the battlefield you can have it fight a creature, and then that fight will trigger its enrage ability, and then you can just keep going until you either clear out all the creatures or it dies. This is in some ways a creature based board wipe as with 10 power it can clear out quite a few creatures. Itali Primal Storm is one of those cards that's been reprinted to death but I just love what the ability this creature does. You can use your opponent's cards against them for free and makes a great commander of their own deck. It's also one of the only instances where I will be okay with mass land destruction because unfortunately there will be a point where Itali does not need its lands anymore and so neither should your opponents. Kinjali Sunwing makes your opponent's creatures enter the battlefield tapped which can be a great method to throw your opponents off their tempo. Quartzwood Crasher is a 6-6 six, six for 5 mana with Trample, and when one or more of your creatures with Trample deal combat damage to a player, you create an XX Green Beast token with Trample, where X is the total damage those creatures dealt to that player. This is fun, especially if you add in more trampling dinosaurs or just ways to give your creatures Trample. You're going to begin producing bigger and bigger tokens, and so this is going to snowball very quickly. Regal Behemoth is a bit of a surprise to me, I only recently learned it was eroded to be a dinosaur. It has Trample, and when it enters the battlefield, you become the Monarch. Hooray! While you're the Monarch, you add an additional mana of any color whenever you tap a land for mana. This is some nice ramp, which also feeds into the dinosaur strategy as well. Runic Armasaur is a 2-5 with one potent ability. Whenever an opponent activates an ability of a creature or land that isn't a mana ability, you can tap a card. This gives us another draw engine that's going to rely on your opponents using their abilities. Wayward Swordtooth is a 5-5 for 3 mana with Ascend. You can play an additional land on each of your turns, which is much needed ramp. 
The only drawback is you're only able to attack or block with the sword tooth if you have the city's blessing. The Ascend mechanic will give you the city's blessing for the remainder of the game once you've achieved getting 10 or more permanents onto your battlefield. You also do not lose the city's blessing should you drop below 10. Xenagos, God of Revels, is one of the Theros gods. It's a 6-5 for 5 mana with indestructible. As long as your devotion to red and green is less than 7, it's not a creature. And at the beginning of combat on your turn, another target creature you control gains haste and plus X plus X until the end of the turn, where X is that creature's power. This is so much fun given how large dinosaurs can be, and so doubling their power and toughness makes them much more of a threat. I'm normally not a big fan of decks that simply look to turn creatures sideways, but this is definitely the kind of card that will incentivize me to build a deck like that. I am not commenting on Zatalpa, I have never been so sick of a card in my life as this one. Chandra's Ignition is incredible, it's one of my favorite red spells. If you get a creature large enough, this alone can not only wipe out the battlefield, but quite possibly can win you the game. If a creature has lifelink, you will also gain life equal to the total number of damage that it's dealt. Akroma's Will is one of the most expensive reprints in the deck, giving your creatures the set of two keyword ability clumps. But if you control your commander, you can pick both. You can either give Flying Vigilance and Double Strike, or you can give Lifelink, Indestructible, and Protection from all colors. Both are excellent suggestions and can unfortunately be game ending win cons. Descendant's Path is another great way to cheat dinosaurs onto the battlefield, letting you reveal the top card of your library at the beginning of your turn. If it shares a creature type with the creature you control, you can cast it for free. If you don't cast it, you can put it on the bottom of your library. It's free dinosaurs or free sword of scry. Rhythm of the Wild makes our creature spells uncounterable and gives non-token creatures riot. Riot lets you pick between them entering the battlefield with a plus one plus one counter or haste. We get blanket protection for our dinosaurs and we can give them a buff or haste. Both are good options. So now that we've looked at the cards that are in the deck, let's talk upgrades. Our goal is to refine the deck to your personal tastes and maintain the deck's function while keeping it to $30 or less. Atla Palani, Nest Tender, is a great way to help cheat out some of our dinosaurs. She adds an element of chance to the deck, but I think that this is an invaluable card for what we're trying to do here. We can pay two to create an egg, and then whenever an egg dies, you get a creature. I'd say regardless of what creature we flip into, we're going to be saving mana, which is critical in a deck like this. The Forerunner cycle here has been almost a mainstay in these upgrade guides, and it feels appropriate. They're all from Ixalan, so let's go with it. The Forerunner of the Empire not only tutors a dinosaur to the top of our library, but whenever a dinosaur enters the battlefield under our control, the Forerunner will deal one damage to each creature. This is great because it can help trigger our Enrage cards and start getting that ball rolling. Galta and Mavrin felt like a bit of a funny include here. Not sure how I feel about a 12-12 Dinosaur Vampire for 7 mana. Rawr. It has Trample, and so whenever you attack, you choose 1. You either create a tapped and attacking XX Green Dinosaur with Trample, where X is the greatest power among other attacking creatures, or you create X11 vampires with lifelink, where X is the number of other attacking creatures. This deck, it's all about the dinosaurs, so we're gonna go with making the dinosaur when this attacks. Hulking Raptor is a pretty decently sized dinosaur, being a 5 3 for 4 mana. It has warts, so it's going to be pretty protected. It also ramps us 2 green mana for every one of our pre combat main phases. See, if you've noticed it by now, Dinosaurs are very mana intensive creatures, and so the curve for this deck is pretty high compared to the other three decks from this collection. So we do want more ramp than other decks to help us keep up with the table. That in mind, we also have both Kinjali's Collar and Knight of the Stampede to help work as ramp spells, giving us a mana discount when casting our dinosaur spells. Priest of the Awakening Sun is a one drop that lets us reveal a dino at the beginning of our upkeep to gain two life, but more importantly, we can pay 5, sack the priest, and then tutor for any dinosaur card. With our commander really wanting us to have control over what dinosaurs we cast, we can use this to tutor for a big booty dino to really start the discover process. Rampaging Ferocidon is one of my more favorite dinosaur cards, as it basically acts as a clock for the table. Some decks do like to go wide with creatures, and so this is going to punish them for doing so. 
If you're sat up at a table with the Merfolk and the Vampire deck, this can help slow them down while you set up. Dinosaurs, we don't go as wide, but we do want to go taller with fewer creatures, so we won't get hurt nearly as bad. Siegehorn Ceratops is a smaller dinosaur, but I like it for how quickly it can grow bigger. There are quite a few synergies in this deck with the Enrage mechanic, and they could be used to make this thing absolutely huge. It's a bit of a goofy combo, but you can combine this with the Temple Altasaur to reduce the damage that this creature takes to 1, ensuring it survives the damage, and then it gets the 2 plus 1 plus 1 counters onto it. Silverclad Ferocidons is another huge powerhouse in this deck. This is pure dino aggression, forcing opponents to sacrifice permanence whenever it's dealt damage. If we can get something to fight this, or swing into something that blocks this, you can start to chew away at your opponent's resource. This is actually another card that the Temple Altasaur can help out, as the balancing factor of these enraged creatures is, in this case, something with 5 power can take this card out in one hit and not give us much ability to use that ability. In the same vein, the Snapping Sailback is very much the larger version of the Ceratops, getting the plus one plus one counter on it whenever the Enrage is triggered. This is my favorite dinosaur to add in, as the Spinosaurus was my favorite dinosaur. Everyone's all about the T-Rex and the Raptors, and the debate stands whether the Rex was a predator or a scavenger, and the Raptors aren't scientifically accurate. I don't care. The Spinosaurus was literally the dinosaur version of a crocodile. This thing was an apex predator of its time. Rawr. Moving on, Titanic Ultimatum just absolutely needs to be in this deck as a win con. It has a bit of a strict mana cost, but getting plus 5 plus 5 across the board, along with First Strike and Lifeling and Trample, if you don't win after playing this card, I, I don't know what you did wrong. Dinosaur Sampede is another win con, being an on-theme overrun for much less mana. It's also an instant, so if an opponent decides to only chump block your Stampede, well, you can drop this as a nasty surprise. Herald's Horn goes along with the notion of ramping using a mana discount, and this comes with the additional upkeep trigger of possibly drawing us another dinosaur. Finally, Garruk's Uprising is 3 mana for an enchantment. When it enters the battlefield, if we control a creature with power 4 or greater, we draw a card. All of our creatures will gain trample, and then if a creature of power 4 or greater enters the battlefield, we draw a card. This is value all over for our deck and giving our big creatures trample will give so much value. And so these 15 cards will help remove some of the, the fluffier cards from the deck and refine the deck, giving you budget-friendly ways to help improve the deck's performance. The goal of this deck is genuinely simple. You get dinosaurs and go Jurassic on your opponents. You want to prioritize ramp and mana discounts, and since dinosaurs are about as hungry for mana as Eldrazi were, you definitely will want your mana. You can, of course, add in some more pricier cards if you want to, like the original Gishath, but if you don't have them or your budget cannot make room for them, the deck can and will work fine without. But let's turn the mic to you. What do you think of this deck? Are there cards that you'd like to recommend for folks wanting to tinker with this? Let's discuss it in the comments section below. And if you enjoyed this video, remember to hit that like button as it really helps us navigate the algorithm. And if you're new here, remember to hit subscribe so you never miss a new video. I appreciate your time, I hope you all enjoyed your stay here, and as always, I'll see you in the next video.